Um, but there was a lot of chaos going on. So last time we were here, we talked about a possible replacement for Kramer because he had to go. Um, and then proceeded. What happened was Kramer fired. Uh, Matthias Kreutzer took over. In the meantime, we were looking for a manager. And then the bombshell hit. Um, <laughs> we were not, uh, I wasn't, I think nobody was inspecting this. Um, came out, I don't know, last Wednesday was? Well, I don't even know what day it was anymore. Um, a bombshell when we all woke up that Roven Schroeder quit. Quit Schalke effective immediately. You texted me early in the morning. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Tell us, like, where you found it, how you felt when you first saw this news, obviously, because I was shocked when I saw that. I thought you were messing with me. Yeah, no, I mean, so obviously Germany is, is ahead of us in the time zone standpoint here in the States. So when we wake up, you know, we're expecting to potentially see in the announcement of a new manager because that's, you know, the search that had been been going on. And instead, I woke up and was greeted to the news that Roven Schroeder had uh, uh, abruptly departed the club. And I think you thought I was joking you know, like at, at first when I when I sent that to you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, apparently from some of the reports, this is not necessarily a surprise internally at like at like a club management level. Yeah. Um, but seemed to be a surprise to the players and then obviously all the fans on the outside. I mean, you think about how many um, leaks Schalke typically has <laughs> to various yeah. you know, journalism outlets. Um, that's kind of been a problem for us over the years. Kind of surprising that this hadn't leaked, um, or that we didn't have any sort of, or correct me if I'm wrong. No, to be fair, it. under the Roven Schroeder era, nothing had leaked really. That's the one bonus about him that you never heard any leaks under Schroeder. That'll probably change now. <laughs> It'll be interesting if he leaked his own department. Yeah, but you know, it's like, like, I mean, so <laughs> that was not something that was on our radar at all. Um, yeah. You know, we've, <sighs> Schroeder deserves obviously a ton of credit for what he did last summer uh rebuilding you know a completely new squad um with a limited budget that could compete in this fight to bundesliga um say what you will about you know the way the end of that season ultimately um you know turned out with us kind of rallying and end up getting you know the title and promotion kind of out of nowhere but we were competitive for the entirety of last season yeah. at least in the mix and and roven schroeder has a lot of um credit that he can take for that uh, obviously, his job was going to be much more difficult this season, trying to jump back up into the Bundesliga with that financial handicap, um, needing a new manager, all these sorts of things. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think he's somebody that we had a lot of confidence in going forward and, and felt good. Regardless of what the coaching situation was, I think most of us felt pretty strongly that you know Schroeder was a guy that could help us long term. Um, and to have him jump ship like this in the middle of the season, just as things are really starting to go downhill is, is very disheartening. I think to the fan base, yeah. um, you heard Marius Bolter, I think today in a quote, say that like that, that, you know, affected them as well, because Schroeder was kind of an unflappably positive guy that you could always go to for support. And then to have him depart when things were going yeah. tough is, is a hard psychological thing to deal with. So I'll stop monologuing at this point, but yeah, I mean, shocking. And um, in my opinion, a huge loss and doesn't speak well to the situation at the moment. Yeah, and so the immediate news that came out was that he left for personal reasons, uh, and many people very skeptical of that uh, because the main the main thing people probably thought was that there was internal fighting between Schroeder and and the hierarchy and saying he wanted somebody or they were trying to force someone on him. He didn't want it and said, you know what, I'm out. Uh, they came out and said it was for personal reasons. Um, I know lots of people went to give out their ideas gamer brothers uh broski you know everyone knows him shalka gamer came out and had a, a, a live podcast live video session and he kind of was calling them out and saying like no you know he wanted tedesco and and had all this and that and people said they saw tedesco's car in gelsenkirchen i think it, was, it turned out to be false um but yeah all these rumors started coming out you know and people not sure what's going on and next you know i don't know what was it a day or two later Thomas Rice announced as the manager. Um, and before we get to him, because we had talked about him last podcast, but maybe he was one of the front runners with, um, I forget, the, Petkovic, uh, former Swiss manager. But the whole Schroeder thing, it just threw us for a loop. And now we're like, like you said, we thought we were in a crisis before, and now we lose our, our one stable pillar that we had. And what do we do now? And now we're out with the coach, and now without a, a sporting director. What the hell do we do? We have no money already as it is. Um, yeah, rumors of Tedesco, rumors of Ranić, rumors of all these kind of rumors going on. So it was like a lot of uncertainty, uh, and understandably so because where do you go with a club that has no money, no sporting director, no manager? Like, who do you bring in? You can't even bring in players. Exactly, and I, I think part of the emotional hit is that you know Schroeder is the first figure at the club that I think 
the supporting base had any sort of real connection to since the departure of Tedesco. Yeah. Um, like Tedesco was obviously somebody who we felt understood the club, understood the fans, um, was very invested in it. And, and you know, it, it, this is kind of like a cheap thing to say, but you know, just quote unquote, got it. Like he, he, yeah. he got it. And, and you felt like Schroeder was the same kind of way. Um, you know, it's spoken about how much he identified with the club. And so for him to jump ship, I think was, was, you know, it, just shocking. And also, you know, kind of hurts the morale. Um, yeah. A lot of rumors going on is what the deal was. You know, some were, as you said, suggesting that, you know, he wanted Tedesco and the board, you know, couldn't afford him. And, and so there was, you know, he didn't want to bring in rice and didn't want to be tied to that decision, but the board was pushing him in that direction. And so, you know, potentially to save his own reputation, because uh, he didn't like, you know, jump ship while his reputation is still positive from, the, you know, the promotion season before things go too far south here. Um, yeah, just a lot of speculation. I already saw rumors that, you know, like Red Bull is interested in him or sorry, not Red Bull, uh, Rosin Ballsport, Leipzig, I should say, um, yeah. are, are are interested in him. So maybe there was something already being worked out. I don't know what the situation yeah. is, but yeah. yes, but now it's, you know, it's, it's Peter Knobel, like, you know, kind of at the helm at the moment uh, without a sporting director, with a brand new manager, with a January window rapidly approaching that's going to be very important for this club, particularly when you consider the number of injuries that we have to a squad that was already, um, you know, uh, questionable and on the weaker side in the Bundesliga, certainly to begin with, and is now even further depleted from that. So, um, yeah, strange times at the club. Uh, you wonder if there's, there's still some, you know, internal back and forth and a lack of harmony at the managerial level. We talked about power struggles in the past with Tony's and stuff. You would like to hope that that isn't happening again, but maybe it is. And uh, anyway, now, you know, we arrive at a point where we've what lost six games in a row. Yeah. In the Bundesliga started off with, I think what three wins, two wins, two wins, three draws, two losses, something like that in our first seven. Yeah. And since then it's been completely downhill and we're in free fall. Um, I don't know, man. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not looking good at the moment. This has been a, yeah. a rough few weeks for sure.